Let's take a look now at the rest of chapter eight. So we're going to look at groups of units modulo n as external direct products. So what exactly is a unit group? Well, that's just the u of n groups that we've been working with throughout the chart. So it's all of the elements that are less than n but relatively prime to n. Now what we're going to do is actually introduce a new notation. And this new notation is u sub k of n. And that would give us all of the elements that are in u sub n, or I'm sorry, u of n, such that x mod k is equal to 1, or that it would give us 1 mod k. So for instance, I've given you u10. u10 would consist of 1, 3, 7, and 9. If I look at each of those mod 3, so I've just chosen an a value 3 of k, so k is 3. 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3, 3 is congruent to 0 mod 3, 7 is congruent to 1 mod 3, and 9 is congruent to 0 mod 3. So if I'm looking for u sub 3 of 10, then I'm looking for anything that is congruent to 1 mod 3. So that would be just 1 and 7. And the interesting thing about these is, of course, that that actually will be a subgroup. So I'm not going to go through the subgroup test, but you can certainly do that on your own. What do we know about the unit groups in terms of external direct products? Well, we can say that S and T are relatively prime. Then U of S times T is isomorphic to the external direct product of U of S and U of T, or in symbols, it looks like this. So I'm going to look at an example um, and we'll get back to this later. So let's look at an example of u of 70. u of 70, I've listed all of the elements for you. The order of u of 70 is 24. There are 24 elements in that set. So why did I pick such a large group? Well, I wanted to take a look at what are the factors of 70. So what is the prime factorization of 70? Well, 70 is equal to 2 times 5 times 7. That would give me 70. So according to this um, theorem that we're looking at, u of 70 is going to be isomorphic to the di external direct product of u of 2 external direct product with u of 5, external direct product with u of 7. So that is in fact isomorphic. What's sort of interesting here is u of 2 can actually be isomorphic to z of 1 because that would be the only element of the identity. u of 5 is actually isomorphic to z4 Again, elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And u of 7 is isomorphic to z6. So when I'm writing this, because this is a trivial group, I can actually say that this is isomorphic to the external direct product of z4 and z6. And again, that would make sense because I've already told you there's 24 elements. This has four elements, this has six elements, therefore this would also have 24 elements. So the order of Z4, Z6, oops, is 24. We'll look at a few other useful facts as well. Um, U of two is actually just equals to the identity. U of four is isomorphic to Z2. And I'm not going to prove any of these. I'm just giving you these as facts. U to the 2n is isomorphic to z to the 2 to the n minus 2 with the external direct product with z2 for any n greater than or equal to 3. And u of p to the n, where p is some odd prime value, is isomorphic to z to the z sub p to the n minus p to the n minus 1. So why would this these other useful facts actually be useful? Well, let's take a look at u100. We already know that we can do the prime factorization. 
and say that this is the same as u to the 2 squared u to the 5 squared. So what do I do now? Well, u to the 2 squared is u4. And we know that that's isomorphic, in fact, to z2. And what's u to the 5 squared? Well, u to the 5 squared actually fits this little pattern right here, where 5 is a prime. And so this tells me that this is z to the n, in this case, is 2. So this is 5 squared minus 5 to the 2 minus 1, or 5 to the first. So 25 minus 5 is 20. So this is z20. So what I can see from this is that it's not cyclic, um, and it's not going to be isomorphic to z40, obviously, because 2 and 20 are not relatively prime. We're going to finish up by revisiting isomorphisms in u of n by revisiting a rule we had for isomorphisms in z sub n. So if you'll notice, the rules read the same. So we had a rule that said if you have factors that are relatively prime, then you have an isomorphism um, for those groups. So we have a similar rule for u sub n, and we're saying that if you have factors that are relatively prime, say u of 105, I can factor that into 3 times 5 times 7. So I can say that u of 105 is isomorphic to uh, the external direct product of u of 7 and u of 15, or I could say that it's isomorphic to u of 3, um, external direct product u of 5, external direct product u of 7, and so forth. Um, we also had a rule that I said we would get back to and haven't yet, and that is this rule that says u sub s of s times t is isomorphic to u of t and so forth. And so using this exact example, um, we can say that u of 7 is actually isomorphic to u sub 15 of 105. Coming up next, we're going to move on to chapter 9 and take a look at normal subgroups.